Hi, this is Joe from Building Bridges Ministry. We are going to pick back up in Philippians 2. Um, first of all, I want to say is Happy Easter to everybody. I'm so grateful for the sacrifice Christ has done for us and given us a way to build that relationship back up with, with God. And uh, so we're going to be looking at Philippians and how it relates to, to Easter as well. All right, so let's go to prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, I come to you today. I ask for wisdom in the words that you want me to share. And I also ask for who's watching, for you to bless them, to give them... Uh, the way to put this into application. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> last week we ended up uh, reading 6 through 11. Today we are going to pick up in Philippians 2 and we're going to start in 12. I'm going to read the whole whole thing and then, we'll, then I'll discuss it as, as I have before. <clears throat> Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on, that, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain, and that my work was not useless. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God, and I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. <clears throat> so, in the beginning of this, verse 12, we, we see Paul talking to the, the church of Philippi, and Reminding them that even when Paul was with them in, in the in the process of of building this church, and he was right alongside of them, encouraging them to step forward in, in following Christ or having the belief that who Christ was. Christ did the same thing after his crucifixion for his disciples. He went back to them in Galilee and reminded them of the work they had done for the, the past three years. And he encouraged them to step out of the locked room and carry on the mission that Jesus was doing. And to carry on the words that Jesus had taught, had taught them. So, <clears throat> we get to cont continue that ministry of Christ by being able to share the Gospels, the testimonies of our own lives, and walking in a life that people could see Christ uh, being resent. Uh, being shown through the way we live. Um, and, you know, it is, it is important for us to remember to walk a life that is very reflective of Christ. As we get into 14, you know, this, this is a tough, a tough thing to remember and, and it's a tough thing to walk out at times but do everything without complaining and arguing 
so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Um, you know, Christ really never really complained. Uh, arguing, not necessarily. Um, pointing, pointing things out in the way Pharisees or leadership was doing things and trying to give them encouragement, trying to correct them so hopefully that they would change their ways. Um, and, you know, Christ was a light, and we need to be the same thing. We need to be the light of Christ as we walk through uh, this world. And this world is, is a mess, unfortunately. Um, but so grateful for Christ to take that uh, step for us that God, God gave him. And, you know, although Christ did ask to have, the, have it taken away from him, <clears throat> if there was another way, he still went, went through it. And, you know, we have moments in our lives in which maybe God put something in front of us and we have that, that doubt. We have that doubt of, I'm not good enough or, you know, is there, a, is there an easier way of doing this or is there a, another way that we can get to the end result? And unfortunately, for, for Christ's situation, there really wasn't. There was the one path that, we, that he had to take. And, you know, there is paths that we only have one path to go to get to where God wants us to be. And, uh, you know, when we make these decisions to follow God and allow God to lead us, we need to not have restrictions on God's leadership. We need to be as children and walk the way God wants us to do. Uh, we do have Jesus to, to follow and, and to emulate. We also have the Holy Spirit in us to give us the words that we need to have in our hearts so that we stay in the direction God is asking us to go. Um, so that's what I wanted to share for us today. Um, you know, Easter... Easter is a is a, a tragedy, but a blessing at the same time. Um, you know, it's such a, a a wild story to have God's Son have to be sacrificed in order to save us or to regain that relationship with God. But you know, it was an important step, and in, in the process and. You know, I'm, I'm grateful that Christ went through with it. I'm, I'm grateful for uh, Christ to be stronger than his human side, to allow his, his father to lead him in the direction that he was asked to walk. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. I uh, hope you all have a, a blessed Easter, and thank you and have a good day.